Hi, my name is Aubrey Dillon, used to be Aubrey Stevens. I was in Corral from 98 through 03, and uh, this is my Corral tour story. Uh, when I told Dr. Adams I was going to post one, he assumed it was the story about me staying the night in an RV down by the Ohio River with a cat named Peanut Butter. It's an awesome story, and um, I did tell it on the Corral tour bus, but that was only due to popular demand. It's actually something that happened to me on band tour. So, Fletch, you gotta have a band tour reunion someday, because this story, you remember it. It deserves to be told again. Anyway, um, no, this story ap actually happened during Corral tour, and Dr. Adams never heard it. It was not told on the tour bus for reasons which will become obvious. Um, it was in 2002, I believe, uh, and we were in Arizona, and for that particular tour, there was one song that we didn't have memorized. Everything else, yes, but The Wearing of the Green, an Irish tune, we did not have memorized, and so we'd get out our folders every single night and open them up for that one piece and then put them away. And one particular evening, a friend of mine, um, uh, and names will remain anonymous, uh, opened up her music and written above the staves were randomly words like poop, pee, vomit. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a bad joke, but she wasn't expecting it and so it made her giggle. And then she felt really bad and embarrassed, and so afterwards she's just trying to figure out who did this to her music, and a particular tenor saunters up very proud of himself for his little joke. Uh, so she was kind of fuming, and anyway, she and her packing partner got assigned to the same host family as me and my packing partner, and so the four of us were standing around getting ready to go, and we're like, hey, we should go steal his music and do something to him. Yeah. So we went and got his folder and took it with us and proceeded to completely, completely ravage his music to the point of no return. It was amazing. The later we stayed up, the more creative we got and by the wee hours of the morning we had rewritten all the lyrics, not all, we had changed key words in the lyrics to The Wearing of the Green to make it an incredibly dirty song. So, so dirty that I cannot think of a single rewritten lyric that I can share with you on this video. It was that bad and great. Uh, we changed the title, we changed the composer's name, all to dirtier versions. And um, we even went as far as to write the new lyrics, the edited words, in tiny, tiny font and cut them out and tape them into his music so it almost looked like it was the real thing. Ah, uh, yeah. So anyway, we had, oh my gosh, the best night ever doing that. And um, the next morning slipped his folder back in with the others. That night at the concert, when we raised our folder to sing that, well, for one thing, the four of us, we were so, I mean, the new lyrics were just like stamped in our brains. There was no getting around what we had done. It was forever there. We could not think of that song in the original context anymore. And so it was hard enough for us to get through them. Uh, but uh, when the tenor in question opened his folder, it went something like this. Like that, for three minutes straight. He didn't sing a word. He just stared there, open mouthed at his music. And it was so perfect. And afterwards, we were all mingling around in the foyer, and the four of us were exulting over our victory, and uh, 
he walks up and he tried to say something to us, but he couldn't really get anything out. It was very, you know, like, uh, <laughs> lots of that. Finally, he walked away and we were congratulating ourselves. And but I, I, but I think the highlight, the best part was the next morning when we arrived back at the tour bus, he had a handwritten thank you note for each one of us, thanking us for our creativity and told how impressed he was with us. And that was pretty amazing too. <laughs> so I gotta say, lesson to all you guys, don't mess with a pack of corral girls because we will own you.